It is important to demonstrate dignity and respect for others as part of any relationship, as it creates a sense of trust between people and helps us to feel good about ourselves, increasing our sense of well-being. It is sometimes easier to recognize when we have felt disrespected or feel that something is undignified in order to understand what it is that helps to maintain dignity and respect for others. Think about when you have received a service where you have felt unwanted, uncared for or disrespected. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's time to summer break. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute. While watching this, would you have felt that you were being treated with dignity or respect? You may have felt that the person serving you wasn't interested in you, that you were not important to them, that you would have left feeling upset or possibly annoyed. As a care worker, it's essential that you demonstrate respect and maintain dignity for every resident you work with, and it should be demonstrated in everything you do from the way that you communicate with people. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you. To the way that you carry out various tasks. To the way you provide personal care, as guided by each individual's care plan. Treating people with dignity and respect increases their sense of well-being. It helps people to feel they're valued as individuals. As a care worker, it is expected that this will be demonstrated in every action and interaction you have with the people you're working for. It is integral to providing person-centered individual care. This resource will show you ways in which you can achieve that, but I'm sure you'll have many other examples of your own. Promoting dignity and respect for others creates a sense of trust and well-being. It is an essential part of providing individualised, person-centred care. Dignity and respect has not always been as clearly recognised as an expectation of how social care should be delivered. For this reason, the government recently launched a Dignity in Care campaign in an attempt to end the tolerance of indignity in care. Many care providers and individual care workers have always provided high quality care, which meant that every resident was treated with dignity and respect. However, some care workers and care providers have been more concerned with routines and tasks than individual residents. Through this scheme, care workers are encouraged to sign up as dignity champions and promote and share best practice. But why was it that such a scheme was felt necessary? Aren't carers caring people? Well, most carers are, but sometimes there are situations which put staff under pressure, such as time constraints, or working with a resident or service user who may display certain behaviours that are challenging to work with, or just not thinking about the implications of routines on individual residents. In such situations, however, it is not the resident or service user's fault that these pressures exist, and therefore it is not fair to treat them in a disrespectful way due to pressures staff may feel under. In the situations seen here, staff simply needed to take a little more time, care and attention, communicating with each individual resident before serving their meal, or moving a resident in her wheelchair, or using a mobile phone while working. These are all actions which are disrespectful. You can help to maintain a person's dignity and respect through your communication with that person, paying particular attention to how you provide personal care, paying particular attention to how you assist someone to eat, paying particular attention to someone's appearance if the person is unable to choose their own clothes, by helping people to remain as independent as possible without struggling and relying on others for help, by respecting that people have different views, beliefs and routines which may be really important to that person. By allowing somebody as much control and choice over their own life as possible. Demonstrating dignity and respect for someone is a fundamental part of safeguarding somebody who, for whatever reason, needs to rely on others to provide services and aspects of care because they are unable to themselves. The principles of dignity and respect are also included in all social care standards and good practice guidance. 
Both dignity and respect are included as essential criteria for providing person-centered support. In fact, maintaining a person's dignity and showing respect for each individual is actually part of helping to keep people safe and should form the basis of any caring relationship. Dignity and respect should be promoted through every interaction with residents, the way food is prepared and served, the way assistance with eating and personal care is provided, promoting choice and control, respecting residents' privacy, the care provided to people to help them feel valued and included. One of the easiest and simplest ways to demonstrate respect for somebody is through your communication with them. Hi Preet, your brother's here to see you. Can I have a word? Please don't refer to Mr Singh as Harpreet. He finds it disrespectful. Oh, he doesn't mind. He's not said anything to me. But his care plan clearly states he prefers to be called Mr Singh. We must respect that. Always ensure that you address the person in the manner in which they wish to be addressed. Some people prefer more formal types of address and others prefer more informal ones. Never make assumptions and make sure you always follow any wishes that have been recorded in the care plan. The, 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 I, I, I would like water. I'll get someone else to help you, Magda. I don't know what she wants. I can never understand her. Can you talk to her, please? You need to learn how best to communicate with Magda. And you'll never learn if you keep asking other people. Imagine how Magda feels. Having difficulty understanding somebody is no reason to give up on communication. Sometimes it does take time to understand each person's unique form of communication. Patience and perseverance are key factors of learning to communicate effectively in such circumstances. There are also communication aids which some residents may prefer to use instead. Sometimes people feel that their dignity is protected more by using other forms of communication such as pictures, symbols, or writing things down. Different forms of communication should be discussed with residents, although the communication method may vary with the complexity of the communication required. The residents' preferred communication methods should then be recorded in their care plan and followed by all staff. Lucy seems to have had a lot of clothes go missing recently and I'm not very happy about it. We spent over £200 on new clothes a few months ago and I can't find most of them. I'm so sorry this has happened. We have had a few problems with laundry lately and we're working on them. But quite a few of Lucy's clothes were put into her wardrobe without any identifying marks on the label. Well, I could sew um, name tags into them. A lot of the residents have said that they find it undignified, childlike even, to have name tags. So we try and put their initials on the clothing labels instead. Because Lucy's clothes were new, a lot of the staff have said that they didn't recognise them, and Lucy doesn't recognise all of them either. Well, what can be done to find them? Well, if you could spend half an hour or so with me sometime, we can go through the unidentified clothing basket, and I'm sure we'll find them in there. Then I can make sure they're properly marked up before they go back into Lucy's wardrobe. That sounds like a good idea. Look, I don't want to complain and make a fuss. But this is Lucy's property that's gone missing. I know. I do understand your concern, and I can only apologise that this has happened. Treating complaints seriously and dealing with them in a calm and professional manner is an important part of demonstrating respect, both for the resident and, in this case, the relative who has complained. Lucy. I think we'll have to take you to change your pad. I'll take this cushion to the laundry and then we'll go to your room. Pad? What pad? I don't know what you're talking about. Leave me alone. No, dear, come on, we'll take you to your room because your skirt's wet. You'll be more comfortable. Caring for people who have continence difficulties can be a tricky and embarrassing situation for both the resident and the carer. 
It is important to remember that though many residents have lost the ability to understand that they have been incontinent, if they realised, many would be highly embarrassed and feel they'd lost their dignity. Many residents do not understand the use of incontinence pads or why they feel wet. In order to preserve the resident's dignity and show respect for him or her, carers must handle these situations very sensitively and try to understand the resident's perspective of the situation. A more dignified and respectful approach for some residents could be... I think your skirt's got a little bit wet. Should we go and find you another one, make you more comfortable? Are you feeling a bit cold with that? Yes, it does feel a little cold. Come along then, let's get you sorted out. Responding to people's feelings in this way can sometimes be more dignified than responding to the actual situation, although each situation will be different because of the individual's reaction. The carer's response should be intended to maintain dignity rather than to simply complete a task and change a resident's clothing. Uh, we need to set your care plan review date for next month, Celestine. We need to evaluate the objectives we set, plan for the future and set new outcomes for the year ahead. Did you understand exactly what the care worker meant here? Do you think Celestine did? It is important that when we are giving information or discussing important things, we do it in a way which people understand, but which isn't patronising. Celestine, this week I'd like to agree a date with you to go over your care plan. Uh, do you remember the agreements we made last year? Well, we just need to go through them to make sure they're OK or see if anything needs altering. Always make sure that you address the person in the manner in which they've chosen to be addressed. Listen carefully to what the person is saying. Give people the correct information in a way that they can understand it. Have a good understanding of how to reduce barriers to communication caused by physical or cognitive impairments, such as dementia.